So, hey everybody, uh, welcome back to my kitchen uh, for another episode of America at the Crossroads. And um, if you remember who I am, my name is Kathleen Henry. I'm just your average, everyday American, nothing special. And as a matter of fact, I'm so average that right now in the middle of cleaning up uh, a mess after our water heater had a little mishap. So um, I thought I'd take this opportunity while everybody's out to squeeze in a little bit of conversation, continuing to talk about, you know, uh, America at a crossroads, having basically an identity crisis. As I mentioned in the first video, we're in an information uh, revolution, right? So all this information is now available to us and we're sending a lot of information out and we're sending out a lot of ideas, but of course things are coming back at, at a, uh, us, including communications with other countries who can now tell us very quickly, <laughs> immediately, and we can know immediately without much of any filter uh, what the reactions are to our actions or our ideas. And our ideas are very important because we are in the information revolution where we get to send out information about liberty. Where we're, when we have these conversations about um, what is freedom, who can be free, who can come to America, who can have the right to be served or not, whether we believe we should be compelled to salute the flag or if it's a idea of consciousness or if there's some um, overall patriotism involved there. All of these discussions that we're having are happening in real time and being, you know, not just sort of conveyed in some little newspaper snippet somewhere somebody might read or even on a television that somebody might watch, but in fact on an internet where like three billion people on a regular basis are connected to the internet and can see everything that we say and do. And so our ideas, our way of life, the thing that we have held up as the great American experiment, the great morality of the world in the last three centuries <laughs> um, is being um, not just debated amongst ourselves, but looked at across the world. And you know, people get to make decisions about their future based on these ideas. So, um, you know, it's not like in the old days where we used to be able to just control our image via a little bit of television or newspaper. We're like spitting it out like a big flamethrower <laughs> to everybody. And it's coming back at us. So um, people are surprised to discover that not everybody agrees with the ideas of the United States or in how the world should operate, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, uh, it makes people have a little bit of angst. But it's super important that we kind of understand how this works and figure out how we're going to go forward because it will impact the future of America on the world stage. Second, we have a lot of challenges. In the second video I talked about, we have a lot of external challenges. The United States is a great economic power. Um, rising tide lifts all boats, and we definitely lifted a lot of boats, including people who are now coming up behind us who want to challenge our position as number one on the world stage, economically, politically, militarily. So, <clears throat> We are having to adjust to that idea and figure out how we maintain our position, whether we need allies or if we think we can go it alone. Is it America first or is it America the leader? Um, how do we go about maintaining or establishing our position um, without losing the great economic and political uh, military machine <laughs> that we've created in order to maintain our liberty and our way of life, let's face it. So um, that leads us to number three challenge. That is our internal debates, which as I mentioned about the first information revolution um, video, is that all of our debates just aren't happening in here. It's not just something we're talking about. All of our debates are completely public 
it's like your mom and dad are having a fight and they don't close the bedroom door anymore. <laughs> right? We just have those fights out in public and all the kids can see. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a good and bad thing about that, right? So it's kind of uh, damaging a little bit of our image on the world stage where America in a sort of a closed communication situation could present a particular image and whatever questions or issues didn't come back very much <laughs> um, or we were unaware of them in any event and we could simply kind of control the message and control the image we don't have that luxury anymore so it can be kind of damaging the other good news though the good part crazy as this might seem is that um, we're teaching the world about how liberty works so um you know i have some friends who talk about uh freedom uh the the free market of ideas and how they kind of think it, it should look and a lot of people talk about it like it's your produce section at the grocery store like these apples are just passively lying there <laughs> with some signs next to them saying what kind they are um and maybe there's some apples over there that don't look so good um, but they're presented to you in some equal ma measure passively and you just go along and select it like that's the free market of ideas that everybody just says their little thing and then you somehow will logically and naturally just pick the right apple or the right idea but that isn't how it works and that's why in some ways our very public debates about free will who can be free and uh, what is justice the three great questions that are always with us um, the, this whole conversation about them is kind of teaching the world <laughs> about how that works. Because in reality, um, the free marketplace of ideas is not your produce aisle at your local grocery store. The free marketplace of ideas is like a freaking fish market where everybody's yelling and telling you to come over here and try out their products and ignore that other guy over there because his product stinks and it's bad fish. Don't eat it. It'll make you sick. So that is really how the free marketplace of ideas really works. Um, and sometimes you get shouted down. And sometimes the fish and, or ideas are flying right past you really quick. Now, not everybody enjoys <laughs> that kind of uh, market. And surely there's something to be said for having a polite discussions amongst people who can disagree politely. But there's also something to be able to say, you know what, that idea is rotten, <laughs> like a rotten fish, you know, um, and really put forth our ideas in a, a really strong manner, not like your passive apples. So <laughs> this is where we're at. The three, some of the challenges, so three challenges is our, um, our, identity crisis from the information revolution also caused by our challenges external challenges and some of our internal challenges which creates this um, major debate that continually happens in the united states because that is in fact the concept of liberty is that we get to talk about what we think we believe and how we want to be governed all right so the three big questions that i keep talking about as we go along is um, free will, who's got it? Uh, who can be free? In other words, who can use their free will? Um, and uh, what is justice? So is justice just the law without mercy or morality or um, justice as a separate thing? And it, or is law like the just the will of the people? And isn't that kind of dangerous? Because that when it's just the law it becomes a tool of abuse so one of the things that i wanted to get to is how what are these things that are facing us right now why are we having these big questions and the reality is is because liberty freedom as strange as it is because it seems like it's rolling back a little bit um we put this idea out there and it's being confronted on every level even internally on every level and uh, but that also means that more people are beginning to think about what it means and it's probably about to expand it's usually what happens in history 
is whenever you see this big tumult and people are discussing the uh, concepts of liberty, the next thing that happens is it usually expands. Now, I'm not guaranteeing that because part of it is about us. You know, because sometimes some things um, contract. But we're not about contracting liberty. We're about expanding it. Okay? So your three great ideas. Think about what are the things that are happening right now that look like these three great questions um, that always impact us. Like who's right, for instance. The gentleman who claims that uh, his freedom of belief is First Amendment rights for his religion. Uh, is he right to say that he should be able to refuse services to gay couples because um, it's against his religious belief? Or is the gay couple right and the state in saying that we no longer um, see separation in public, you know, uh, equal but separate services as an appropriate um, public display of anti-discrimination? Um, there are other ones, like the idea about is it right to be compelled to have to stand up or or uh, give allegiance or any other uh, tribute to leaders or flag or whatever? Or is it right that you have freedom of conscience to object to that? So these are just a couple questions um, that are out there that really reflect the very big ideas that are continuously in question in the United States that we have to debate. And it's our job to debate them because that's who we are. We're A, American citizens, and B, you know, um, we are, according to our constitution, the government for the people, by the people, and of the people, and it's our job when we're part of the, of the people. <laughs> so anyways, I hope this kind of like uh, pushes you forward into what of our what of our external um, internal questions, and we can talk a little bit more about that. You notice I didn't give you an answer about what I totally think is correct, <laughs> but I want to talk about those three concepts. I keep saying, think about that. What are we doing? All right, talk to you later.